Let's get down to the hood and remove our negative battery terminal. Now we'll just set that away from the battery. Remove our radiator cap. You want to make sure that your radiator is nice and cool to the touch. You definitely don't want to open it while it's hot. There we are. Now what we're going to have to do is remove this unit from the vehicle itself. and lift this up and we'll carefully set this aside. Now that we have everything off of the fan shroud, we can continue on with our four mounting bolts. You're gonna find two on each side of this. Let's go ahead and remove all four. Now up along the front, you're gonna find three mounting bolts. Let's go ahead and get those off of there. Let's grab onto this. Get it out of the way. Now the next thing we need to do is remove the fan clutch from this. To do that, it's going to be easiest with a tool that looks a lot like this. Essentially what I want to do with this is just get it on the nut side of this, which is the back side, and then I'm going to turn this counterclockwise to break it free. Alright, let's go ahead and spin this off of here. When you're removing your fan, you want to be very careful not to let it drop down and damage your radiator cooling fence here. If it comes down and peens these over, you're going to have a restriction of airflow, which could cause an overheating condition if it's bad enough. We can grab onto this. Get this out of the way. It's supposed to have two bottom bolts. The petcock to drain your cooling is going to be on the driver's side, lower aspect of the radiator. Go ahead and carefully grab onto that with some pliers and then go ahead and loosen it up. When you do this, it's important to make sure that you have a coolant bucket underneath there, something that you can safely recycle the fluid with. Let's let that drain out. You come along the passenger side of the engine, right in front of the starter here, you're going to be able to find where the knock sensor is. If yours looks like ours does with a whole bunch of oil and mess around it, just go ahead and clean down the area before you get started. Now that I have this mostly cleaned down, we're going to continue on by squeezing the long areas of this, essentially on the two tabs. Once you squeeze it, just go ahead and draw it off of the knock sensor. Inspect it, make sure it's not damaged in any way. This one looks good, so I'll go ahead and set it aside. Now we're going to use a 22 millimeter socket and unscrew this from the engine. Just take note that it's not necessarily screwed all the way in so it's bottomed out against the engine. I'll show you once we get it out. Carefully pull this out of here. I'm just going to stand to the side. There it is, friends. Okay, so once you match up your knock sensor, go ahead and install it. Bring it right up here. We're going to start it in by hand. Once we've got it going a couple good threads, we'll go ahead and tighten it up. When you torque this, you want to torque it to 14 foot-pounds. Something real quick to notice is that the knock sensor itself wasn't bottomed out. So essentially, it just went approximately three quarters of the threads, and that was it. Getting the socket to stay on there while you're using the torque wrench might be a little bit difficult. There we are, that's torqued to 14. Now just take your wire, clip it right on there. There we are, give it a nice wiggle. You wanna ensure that it's secured. Now let's put our negative battery terminal back on here. Make sure that's secure. Now we just wanna double check to make sure that our pet cock is 100% closed. This looks great. Now for ours personally, we had those two bolts that were missing down along the bottom, so I'm not necessarily gonna worry about those, but of course you would wanna start them in. Now it's gonna be time to get this fan clutch on here. Line it up, turn it clockwise. All right, we've got this started. Let's go ahead and bottom it out and then we'll snug it up. Now let's get this upper shroud in there. Line this up with its mounting holes. Now let's just go ahead and put in our three bolts that come across the top here and then the two that go on each side of this. Give your fan a quick spin, make sure it's not hitting up against anything. At this point, let's continue on to putting our wiring back across here and we'll mount it back in so it's nice and secured. Ah! 
So now the next thing that you want to do is go ahead and fill up your cooling system. It's going to be easiest with a funnel buddy that looks like this. Essentially, you want to just go ahead and fill it up with the Dex Cool coolant, or of course you can use some kind of long life coolant as long as it says that you can mix it with any type of coolant such as Dexacool. Go ahead and put your radiator cap back on there and then take it for a road test.